see right. All you gotta do is look at this trail. Um, but most guys, when they come up to Hot Creek, do what that guy did and cast directly over probably 20 fish. Less pressure though on that side. On the opposite what do you side? think? Everybody casts yeah. over here. So, <laughs> it, it's a crappy presentation. Yeah. So, so you got you got less of a chance because the microcurrents on the far side. Yeah. You got way more people casting over there with sloppy cast. And then you got all these fish that are basically getting overshot. Now, there's a there's also a unique thing about about trout that I, I realized on the green, not it took me a while to figure it out. I walked up to the Green River one time and right there at the boat launch, if you guys ever been there, there's trout feeding right at the boat launch. And I thought, my God, and it was a big fish, like 18 <laughs> inches. I said, what in the world? This guy's sitting right there. And I fished for him and I fished for him and I didn't catch him. But he was feeding. Well, these fish get conditioned. There's a thousand people that walk this trail every day. And if they didn't feed every time somebody walked by, what do you think would happen? Starved, They'd starve to death. So they get conditioned to the fact that when someone walks by, they don't really spook unless they feel like they're being threatened or fished over. So in a lot of situations in Hawk Creek or some of these high pressure waters, you really don't have to be too stealthy because these fish are pretty much conditioned that there's, they see it all day long and if they stop feeding, they'll starve to death. So, but getting back to the prime lies, um, one of the things I found through electric fishing is the fish are dispersed uh, all over the stream usually. And most of the time it's not in the middle of the river. Most of the time it's very close to the shoreline in relation to two things, cover, primarily overhead cover, and a spot where they can gobble bugs without having to uh, spend a lot of energy. That's really critical when you're evaluating uh, your angling and where you fish. Again, I, a lot of this I gleaned off electric fishing when I fished and was like, oh my gosh, there's fish. Uh, Hat Creek in Northern California. We dive that and we'll dive by the guys in the powerhouse riffle and I'll dive by and it is at one, we used to have a lot of fish in Hat Creek. It was uh, without a doubt the most fish I would ever see in the entire dive was directly two feet downstream of the anglers fishing the powerhouse riffle. And those guys are casting out that way, you know, 30, 40 feet as far as they could cast. And they had 50 fish right below them with the San Juan Shuffle, right? You guys all are familiar with that. They're kicking up the bugs, and they got a feed lot right below them, and they're all casting out there because, you know, they didn't understand the, uh, the complexity and the forage. So forage and cover drive everything. And then uh, the issue about, you know, thermodynamics and the amount of energy and calories it takes for a trout to hold. Fast water, it's a hard living for a trout to do. You either got to get behind a boulder, um, or they're not going to be in that fast water. Again, far banking. You know, you don't need to do it. There's not going to be a lot of fish in fast water unless it's worth it energetically that they're eating bugs or they've got some sort of refugia, velocity refugia. So with that said, sometimes...